All right, here we go, guys. Oh, it is a very slick, wet, and damp Sunday morning here in eastern Long Island, the North Fork of Long Island specifically. Just coming to check my boat. We had a terrible thunderstorm that just rolled through. Uh, I'm, as I'm driving out here, I could still see the lightning to the east. I checked the radar. Um, the storm was running west to east, so it's past us. Now, here's my boat. This boat will eventually be for sale. My eastward cat is out of the mold. Um, just wanted to make sure, you know, power's still on. None of the lightning hit anything. Uh, we'll run the bilge in a second. It's got two automatic bilges, but I'll just manually run it too. Um, this boat eventually will be for sale, and it's part of what we're going to talk about today in this unique Boats by the Side of the Road episode. Unique in a couple ways, because we are going to show a boat for sale in my marina that is not actually by the side of the road, but in a dock slip. Uh, and it's a cool boat, so we'll show that in a second. But I'm debating whether I want to sell my boat uh, late fall privately or through a brokerage. Uh, my boat's an 05 CV310, which... Dimension-wise, is the same as the current 320. It's 32 and a half feet long, 9.4 beam. This one has 25 degrees of dead rise. Twin 350 uh, Merc Verados. They're 2017's eight-year platinum warranty. Warranty on the engines till 2025, September 30. There was lightning to the east. I don't know if the video will have caught that. Uh, warranty through September 30, 2025. I do have a new trailer for it too. All the electronics, literally all the electronics, including the transducer, the radar, the screens are brand new. Uh, we had a lot of work done to the fuel tanks over the winter. Um, all the cushions are new as of 2017. It really is a newer 2005. Um, and I'm debating, do I sell it privately or do I go through a broker? And the reason you go through a broker they do all the hard work for you, but they take typically 10% off whatever the boat sell, sells for. So you, you do lose a little, but they do all the work. Is it worth it? Do you want to deal with the hassle? That's the question. And we're going to look at some brokered boats today, including this one. Hey, another catamaran. Uh, very similar to the one I'm building, but this is a dual console layout. Uh, twin Merc 150s on... A World Cat 23, really cool boat. My buddy John is selling it. He's moving to a pontoon boat. John's a little older. He's retired. Um, he's asking 36 for it, and you can see there it is offered by. How are we? We are out of dock space here. I don't want to fall in the water, but it's offered by Bruce McDonald 631 987 9989 uh, Brewer Yacht Sales. So again, John doesn't want to deal with the hassle of dealing with potential buyers, bait testing it. Broker typically does all that when they are selling the boat and that's how they make their commission. They do all the paperwork typically too. And you can see a really nice layout on this boat. There's twin anchor lockers up front, big box up here, little forward seating area for two people. And uh, see the rods there. John and his family do go fishing in the bay. I can tell you he doesn't really take this boat out far. It's a sandbar boat, uh, fishing in the bay boat, weak fish and things like that. And it's a really cool layout and he loves the ride of this boat. He did tell me it's the best riding small boat he's ever been on, which makes sense because that's what catamarans are known for. It does have a, looks like a single Garmin screen there. There are the binnacles for the uh, twin Merc 154 strokes. Uh, again, he had told me he's looking for 36 for this boat. I did ask him to send me the, the year. I just texted him. Uh, of course, it's 5.30 in the morning, so he's not answering yet, but he will eventually. Uh, the year of the boat, the hours on the Mercs, but really cool little boat. And you can see it's pretty big profile-wise. There's a 21 contender next to it. And... Yeah, I mean, this looks like a lot bigger boat. I get it's two feet longer, but the, the gunnels are higher. Uh, it just looks like a more substantive boat. Um, and it, for those that have never ridden in a cat, the ride is fantastic. You have 
twin narrow hull slicing through the water rather than one big rounded hull. Uh, so typically they, they pound less and tend to slice through larger seas better than a monohull will. There's a boarding ladder right there. They do use this boat to go to the sandbars and go swimming and have beach days. Uh, really cool boat. A boat I would be interested in buying if I wasn't having my eastward built. If it was maybe a center console layout, I'm not a, a fan personally of dual consoles, but I, I do understand that they are really cool for, for more family-oriented activities, with, which is what John does with this boat. It's, it's really a, uh, a family boat and an occasional fishing boat. You do see the bimini top up here. There is a bench seat that folds up. There's a massive fish, uh, fish locker here, another one over there some rod storage under the gunnels and a couple of rod holders, three rod holders on each side of the gunnels here. Um, so 36 K, I think it's a good deal. I did show the broker information if you are interested in this one and, uh, yeah, a little unique. We're, we're starting, um, <laughs> we're not starting in the car first time ever. We're starting at a boat at my Marina. I'm going to jump on my boat now, turn on the bilge and then we'll get on the road. We'll, we'll do the more traditional, uh, boats by the side of the road format where we're driving around the North Fork and I'm going to stop at two boat yards that I did see brokered boats for sale at. Um, so I think we're going to see two more boats, one at uh, the boat yard I use for my CV, which is Albertson's Marine. I saw they have a Sea Chaser center console there. Sea Chaser is the offshore center console brand for Carolina Skiff. And then um, we're gonna go to South Hold Marine. I saw a cool little skiffish type boat. I did see a for sale sign on it. Don't know the details. It kinda looked like a Steiger or a privateer, but I'm not sure yet. But we'll see what that's all about. We'll see what the prices are on the two. I have no idea. And we'll go from there. All right, we are on Route 25. We're about to hit Albertsons and we're gonna look at that Sea Chaser. The very uh, <clears throat> thin little strip of road on the south side of the North Fork here. <clears throat> Peconic Bay is to our left. And we should be coming up on it any second here on the right side of the road. <clears throat> here it is. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Let's pull in. Oh, there's a whaler here for sale, too. We will get two for one here. Two brokered boats for one. This one wasn't here yesterday, the whaler. They must have just put it out. All right, sea chasers in front of us. We'll look at that one first, and we'll quickly look at that whaler, too. All right, here is the sea chaser. Let's look at the specs. It's a 2020 model. Uh, it's a 27 HFC 96 beam, beamy boat, 27 feet long, two Mercury, 225s. That's what I'm getting on my, uh, the exact engines I'm getting on my, uh, Eastward 24 Cat, twin 225s, 292 hours, 110 K outriggers, VHF radar, GPS times two. And there's the number for Albertsons. They're brokering the boat. Mercy. I like the name. See, it has a full curtain package, like a little pilot house. <coughs> Apologies for the coughing. This uh, humid weather this morning has my allergies acting up. There are the Mercs. This is literally the same engines, like I said, I'm going to have on my boat that's being built right now. I see a live well here. I see a little fish box here. Big forward seating area. We've looked at this boat brand new at the Miami uh, boat show. And it's a really interesting layout, really set up for family and fishing, four rod holders on top. It does have the outriggers if you want to take this offshore. A uh, little tight in the back for a 27. There's a side entry door. You can see these guys do fish. There's a wreck anchor. You would use that if you were tog fishing. There's a, a swing up rear bench seat, aft bench seat, tuna door here, Let's go back out. Another live well there, so you have two live wells. And I do like this enclosed layout, uh, at least for two people to get out of the elements when the weather picks up, you'll, you'll stay nice and dry. The 
The enclosure looks to be in great condition. There's a little side entry door where I'm sure there's a little head. There are the outrigger bases right there. Big outriggers on top, twin antennas. It does say twin GPS screens. It's a big light bar up here too. Here's a look at that. I can't see it. I can't step up, but I, uh, there's a look at the forward area. It does have that very unique layout where, um, you know, there's like a cabinet door. And I'm not sure if you're gonna see it on this side, but really, really unique layout. And this is a budget boat, um, but you do see it does have metal uh, scuppers there or uh, holes there, not, not the plastic one, stainless steel bow rail too. Um, yeah, it, for 110K, 27 footer, twin tw 225s, I don't see any mention of a trailer. But uh, not a bad little deal. And again, this is the Carolina Skiff Offshore CC model. You can see the dead rise there. We'll look up the specs again on it. it looks to be at least uh, 20, 21, 22 degrees. But we'll, we'll, we'll confirm what the dead rise is and what the fuel capacity on this model is. There's a better shot of that cabinet all the way up there there's tackle storage in there um really really unique layout uh, they're, they're, I, I give them credit for at least trying something different this is certainly not a cookie cutter center console um 110k again brokered so you got to factor in if you're the seller of this boat there's a typically a 10 percent fee that goes to the selling broker and here's a big boston whaler uh express model it's the 315 conquest i don't know the price let me let me guess i don't know the year either or the power i haven't seen that yet either um i'm gonna i'm gonna say 275 let's see let's see let's get the details so it's a 2016 31 10 8 beam three twin 300s 360 uh hours on the engines 239 i was i was off no trailer again there's the number if you're interested um so 300 verados joystick piloting that's cool and oh boy can we stand up somewhere and take a quick peek inside big 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 cockpit area 10 foot wow apologies for the road noise 10 foot, eight inch beam, beamy boat. See the rod holders on either side. No rod holders on top because you couldn't get to them, but a really big cockpit. It's gonna have a spacious living quarters. And I don't think this is a bad price, as crazy as that sounds, a almost $250,000 boat. There's three rod holders on either side too. Um, just because it's a Boston Whaler and they, they tend to, you know, get a premium i'd be curious if this is enough power on such a massive boat i have twin 350s on my 32 cb and you know I, i'm gonna venture a guess that it is much lighter than this um certainly not as beamy it's a little longer than this but uh not as beamy and doesn't have the cabin and all the all the extra weight that comes with adding a cabin to a boat uh but i think it's a good price 239 let me know what you think all right we're going to check out one more boat yard that i know has at least one brokered boat for sale and uh we'll check back in when we're in the car and almost there the location is going to be south hold marine in south hold and yeah here's what i'm talking about so uh plastic through hull fitting here um not a big deal up here. I think this is just a drain probably for the anchor locker or the forward area. But that budget sea chaser had had the steel like this holes here. Yep. Uh, just a small observation. Let, let, let's go check out South Hold Marine. And I think South Hold Marine is right up here. Yep. Here it is on the left next to the Long Island Pool Care. How do we get in here? I don't remember. There's the entrance. Okie dokie. 
got a few boats here, but I don't, that Howdy, Captain Howdy I saw was for sale. We'll, we'll, we'll do a quick run through. Oh, they, that one's for sale too, that Mako. I don't think the Starcraft Skinner would like this one is for sale, but let's see what we got. It's a cool little Starcraft. I, I don't see a for sale sign on it. 20 horsepower uh, Yamaha Tiller, couple seats. I guess 14 feet, no for sale sign it on it. Uh, this little whaler has a for sale sign, brokered by South Hold Marine. Um, you know, last time I checked, their website was down. Uh, it, it, it wasn't showing much. So, oh boy, we're not going to know prices on these unless I call and it's Sunday. They're probably closed. Uh, yeah, Sunday closed. There's a little Mako too. What year is this? I don't think this one's for sale. Is this a 90? Yeah, 90 Yamaha. What year is this? This is a 99. Uh, I don't know what size this is. Maybe a 20. Um, it's another Grady here too. So they're a Honda dealer, South Old Marine. You see Hondas on all these. So these have all been repowered. This looks like a 22 Grady dual console. This one's a 2000. So at some point, repowered with a 225 Honda, probably the most reliable, or one of the most reliable engines ever. I've owned three of these. The only thing that ever went wrong with this was the O2 sensor, which is an easy fix. Uh, it was a little bit of a problem point, but in the grand scheme of things that can go wrong with boat engines, it's a minor quibble, and, a quibble, and it was ultra reliable and efficient other than that. Um, Okay, but this is the one I really wanted to show because I like the layout. Now, seeing it up close, it's a three-piece hull. looks like an eight-foot beam. I'm going to guess Privateer. Captain Howdy, 115 Yamaha. See the splatter finish floor, but it is a three-piece hull, meaning this cap on top is added after the boat is built. Boats without these caps that, that give you knee support and thigh support and on this boat it's a little lower so it'd be more like knee back here maybe thigh up front um lets you fight a fish a lot easier very simple layout still don't know the brand let's oh and a north shore yacht sales Ugh. captain red where have you gone red's boats um red retired sold the business lives in fort myers florida now enjoying the retired life good for him 115 honda on it uh looks like a newer stainless steel prop on it again i'm going to presume this boat was repowered and i don't see a hin oh boy so that is interesting um i'll check the website i mean I, I'm thinking it's a privateer. It's a little fire extinguisher. Like somebody, boats in relatively solid condition, super layout, single axle trailer. I'd have to guess this is a 20 footer. You can see the, got a, whoop, spiders. A nice bow flare for a smaller boat. Um, look at that spider web. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but. Um, Pop-up cleats, too, something you don't typically see. Here's your gas fill. Very simple bench seat here for the, it, it, the driving position. Uh, nice little bay boat. Take this out, obviously, to the Long Island Sound. On a calm day, you can break the inlet. See the dead rise, the V in the back. Uh, not very aggressive, maybe 12 degrees or so. If I were a betting man, the roller trailers that are super prevalent here in the North Fork of Long Island for some reason. Not a fan of those. I'm always concerned that you're driving, trailering the boat and the the winch strap breaks and the trailer slides off. That's just my paranoid concern on those. Um, it'd be great if I could get a price on this. But again, last time I checked their website, which was a couple months ago, it, you know, it was check back soon for updates under construction. Um, so I'm not sure we're going to get a price. I don't even know the make because the hint is not showing. Perhaps this is an older model that was rebuilt. Uh, maybe the transom was redone at some point and they covered the hint when they did that. But, uh, hey, I like this boat for its simplicity and 
you know, its intended purpose. If this was going to be a boat I fished Peconic Bay only in, uh, with occasional ventures out to Plum Gut, perhaps the race, Plum Island, on a calm day, this would be perfect for that. Perfect for that. I like the color, too. I like the name also, Captain Howdy. Very cool. Okie dokie. So a lot of boats here. Um, we'll get back in the, uh, in the NART and uh, I'll offer you my thoughts. All right, and before we jump back in the Ridgeline for the final thoughts, I did check their website and it is up and running and that Captain Howdy Boyd is actually a privateer. It's a 1979. You know, when I was editing the video, I did see that the hin was etched in. I don't know how I missed it. Completely rebuilt, uh, transom, stringers, deck, a uh, new engine, obviously, or newer engine on it. They're asking $25,000. Um, still a little bit of money, but again, you're ostensibly getting a new boat. That little whaler was not on the website, but the Grady was. It's showing up as a 2001. I thought I read 2000 on the HIN. Again, newer engine on it. It's a 22 dual console layout. They're asking 35000 for that, under 100 hours, some warranty left on the engine. Um those are the prices. Yeah, I, I think you might be paying a little more because it is brokered and maybe the seller's trying to get uh, some of that 10% commission back, but that's me editorializing and we'll cut to the car now. All right, pulling out a Southhold Marine. Actually gonna hit Black Sheep Bagels on my way home and get a lox and cream cheese bagel, a little Sunday treat for me. Uh, what do I think? It, it, out of these boats that I've saw, the type of fishing I do, uh, I really like the World Cat, John's World Cat. Again, hoping uh, by the time I publish this video, he'll get back to me with uh, the number of hours on the engines and the year of the hull. But if that was a center console, I would definitely go for that. But I, I'm not a dual console fan, so I'm scratching that one off the list for now. I'd probably go with that Sea Chaser at 110. Uh, it looked like it had uh, decent electronics, not a lot of hours. A 2020 model with uh, a, a 2020 Merc 225s with relatively low hours. That that would probably be my choice at 110k. Very difficult to find a boat that length, 27 feet, that beam, 9.6 with new engines and the boat is relatively new too at that price uh you those of you that have been following the the boat market new and used know how crazy the prices are more importantly um let me know in the comments your experience with brokers uh what would you do if you were in my shoes trying to sell my boat um would you go with a broker would you try to sell it privately I think I'm going to take a hybrid approach personally, maybe list my boat sometime in September uh, privately uh, while it's still in the water and I, you know, I live local to the boat and I can have, show it, take people out, let them drive it, see what they think. Um, and if I can't sell it by the time it's uh, ready to be pulled out of the water and winterized in November, I will probably just list it with Albertsons, who's my winter storage facility and uh, my boat yard. Uh, but let me know in the comments what your experience with brokered boats is, whether you've sold a boat through a broker or acquired a boat through a broker. I've done both. I do find it's easier dealing with a broker, especially on the selling side, uh, where you know they will do the bait test. They will tour it with the customer saves you a lot of time and it's probably worth the 10 percent um but i've mostly done it with cheaper boats certainly sub one hundred thousand dollar boats this will be the first time i'm doing it with a boat my boat that that will command a price over six figures um i so you know, I'm going to take a bigger hit if I do it that way, which is why I'm debating it. If it was a $50,000 boat, it would be a no-brainer, but my boat will be more in the range of 150 to 175. So, uh, you know, could be a hard, uh, hard pill to swallow knowing you're giving, uh, by the way, there was a 25 CV passing us. That's a unique boat. Not one you see up here a lot. Um, you know that you're going to give up 
potentially fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars at a sale price to the broker. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.